The beautiful Australian island of Tasmania is more than a worthy welcome for this brand new historic series, the Historic Road Racing Championship in R Factor 2, brought to you by the GP Laps YouTube channel and also our fantastic broadcast partners at Simply Race in Milton Keynes. This four and a half mile track will just in a few minutes have 40 classic mid 50s sports cars rumbling through the Australian countryside and also through the town of Longford right in the heart of Australia's southernmost territory. Long straights punctuated by tight corners and also a railway line to cross over as well so hopefully there are no scheduled services today. So it's typical of the tracks of the era really and a staple of the non-championship Tasman series that was dominated by the likes of Brabham, Clark and the names of ratings golden years. So what will we see here today in something that's quite different to what we're used to seeing in sim racing? Well, my name is Aidan Mord, and we have two hours of classic sim racing ahead of us here today. And it's brand new for me and for a lot of people. And I hope you are as interested as I am. Now, I would have a, a broadcast partner today, but uh, Zach Sweeney, unfortunately, cannot be here today. He's had some technical issues, so it is just me here today. So anybody that is in the chat... Uh, Simply Race, uh, also on my YouTube channel as well, and also watching Jake's POV over on uh, GP Laps YouTube. Welcome to you all. Uh, it's just, like I say, something different. We're going to have basically the classic cars of the era uh, straddled across three different classes. So we have the 5 litre class, which is uh, things like the Jaguar D type, the Ferrari 375. Uh, the Gordini T24 and Aston DB3 in the 3 litre class and a Bristol 450 and Maserati A6 GCS in the 2 litre category. So they'll all be racing together on the same track, very much like they would in any multi-class race. And you can see there the layout of the track at uh, Longford in Tasmania. You can see the 100 car just flying up the long straights here. And there's the calendar for the series. So we've got Longford today, and then we're going to round two at Spa. So the old sort of eight mile long tricky triangle that was the old Spa, the absolute death trap that was old Spa. And then, yes, the Isle of Man TT. That's going to take a long time, but luckily it's only going to be something like, what, three laps long, six laps long, uh, according to this sheet of paper I've got in front of me. Dundrod, three hour. Uh, Togo Florio, three laps of that, and then the season finale at Le Mans. And we are currently in qualifying looking at the Dutchman Scooby in the Ferrari 375 Plus in the 5 litre class. He's currently green in the first two sectors, which means that he's set a personal best here. And uh, this track is just absolutely, absolutely mad. I need to flick through my pieces of paper to try and find out where on the actual track he is. Uh, he is on one of the straights. He's sort of coming down the back end of the uh, of the circuit here towards Mountford Corner, so hard on the brakes. And it will be a very, very slow right-hander here, turning back towards the, the town of Longford and towards the pit straight. So there's the pit lane. What constitutes a pit lane? Because it's... Uh, it's, it's that sort of uh, era we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, as he comes across the line to set a 2 minute 34.8. And now we have Enzo Fazzi, the uh, Dutch-Italian driver, driving a all-red Ferrari here. And th these cars just look so odd compared to like GT3s and things like that. Enzo, a, a veteran of R Factor 2 online racing. Usually see him in a prototype and things like that, but he's uh, driving driving in this for a bit of fun. And you can see there we've got Nico Hillebrand currently on provisional pole position. Enzo there in provisional fourth. And we've also got um, a Yerne Simoncic as well. So three veterans of R-Factor 2 online racing. And there is uh, Jake in second place. Currently just half a second off Hillebrand. As uh, I think Enzo's just trying to warm up his brakes here. Uh, the Ferrari using the old drum brakes and there is the man himself Richie Axelson because uh, I, I don't want to butcher his second name Des, Desmares? Desmares? We'll go with that uh, in the Jaguar D-Type which is using disc brakes rather than uh, the drum brakes on the other car so this car will have quite a lot of stopping power and seems to be the most uh, balanced uh, of the cars so far and uh, Jake was actually the fastest in the pre-qualifying session. Uh, in that, he set a 233.7, uh, faster than Hillebrand, Simicic, and Fazzi, uh, who, who all set uh, 234s and quite close. And the cutoff for the five-litre class just a 235.8, 105%, I believe, the uh, the cutoff time. 
as uh, Jake is half a second down in sector two. I think he's aborted his lap and brought it into, uh, in inverted commas, the pit lane. Reese Gardner, the Aussie himself, Southpaw racer. What a lad uh, driving these cars. It's good to see uh, a local man. Well, I don't think he's actually from Tasmania, but he's uh, he's definitely Australian. Look at him go in the uh, the Maserati. The uh, the name at the bottom there is sort of like the fake name, but it, it, it's a Maserati. It's uh, I can't remember what I called it. I've got too many bits of paper and uh, not enough hands. Uh, the Maserati A6 GCS. So that is uh, the car he's driving in the. 2 litre class, I believe. Yes, the 2 litre class. He was actually second overall uh, in, in the qualifying for that. And he's actually the fastest overall in the middle sector for that class. Slower than his personal best in sector 1 by just a 10, but he's managed to claw that time back in the middle sector. A lot of hard braking zones. So it's kind of like Le Mans light, this place, but such an epic track. And if we do get to see the cars just jumping over the uh, over the railway tracks in the middle of the town. It's, it's going to be absolutely great to see. Uh, he's aborted uh, the lap. On board now with Enzo Fazzi in the Ferrari. That looks quick. Straight line speed of these five litre cars is going to be you know, what, makes them, what makes them in this uh, particularly at this track and also at Le Mans and Spa and it's up in the Bit of a wiggle under braking. And just, just gets it pulled up in time. Now, I was talking to Jake before this all started, and he, he said that if you miss your braking point, you're dead. Uh, if you uh, dip it on the grass, like they have been at the 24 hours of Spa at the minute, you're also going to die. Uh, these cars, absolute animals, and the only uh, the only uh, assist they're allowed to use is auto clutch. So no traction control, no anti-lock brakes. It is as it was back in the day. This is hardcore. Uh, we're going full hardcore with this and to see the amount of people uh, turn up to actually do the uh, to do the uh, the pre-qualifying uh, which is now been completed and uh, you can see Nico Hillebrand taking pole position for the first official round of the HRRC. So trying to get everything in before we actually go racing so you can actually see what's going on there. You can just see the, the remaining cars finishing off their laps and the, the great sort of ambience uh, shots that we've got off the uh, of the track. Some great views of, uh, of Tasmania here. Looks absolutely glorious. So these uh, long straights, cars have been maxing themselves out over probably about 180 miles an hour. So if anything goes wrong, it's going to go wrong. And you can see the cars there just turning underneath a, a viaduct. There we go, there's a better shot of it. So it goes under the railway line at one point, and you've got the narrow bridge just in the distance there. You get back into the town of Longford, turn right, and then you cross over the railway line again. Uh, maybe get a little bit of air as well because of the speeds and the you know, the lack of downforce from, from that time. But this track is so difficult, and it's it's actually a lot of fun as well if you've never driven it. And look at that, that's just a beautiful shot there over the river, the River Esk, I believe it's called. Uh, just trying to find uh, I don't know, all the, the geographical landmarks on uh, my little map here. Like I said, I've got a lot of paper, but not enough hands. And uh, yeah, so this is sort of just beyond the start line. So the viaduct is basically turn two here, and then turning right at the old pub, which was apparently in the day a good spectating spot for the, the Formula One cars that used to come through here. And there's the railway line just at the bottom of shot on a very long straight. And most of this is actually gone now, which is uh, quite sad. You know, as things have built up over the years. But still, all good. We've got a few minutes of warm-up just remaining. And then we can get on with the race, which is going to be great. Just taking a couple of sips of coffee here, because I need to be able to concentrate on what's going on, because it's going to be quite a manic first lap up, I think. reams of paper here so just apologies for this just trying to figure out what's going on it's new for everybody uh, it's very new for everybody uh, people are going to be 
wondering what's going on. So like I say, three classes, five liters, three liters, two liters. And we've got 10 people in the uh, in the five liter crew because of, you know, everybody would want to take the fastest car, won't they? We've got 16 people in the three liter class and we have 14 people in the two liter class. So a big spread of, of the field. And actually in the, in the pre-qualifying, if I find my actual final qualifying times, uh, we had um, the fastest two liter car qualified just half a second behind the fastest three liter car. So they're actually gonna be in together, which is gonna be really interesting to watch. The five liter cars are gonna be sort of three to four seconds a lap faster than the uh, than the three liter class. But to see all the three liters and two liters together, is gonna to be really cool to see. Uh, just trying to grab some extra bits and pieces of information that I can just pop on my other screen here. I should have really set it up before we get going, but uh, there we go. I've got the, the chats from Simply Race, the broadcast partners, and uh, also a partner of the Ada Millward YouTube channel, which is also broadcasting this. So I've got the chats are from both. So any questions about what's going on, do ask them. And uh, we can uh, try and sort of, if there's any sort of downtime, we can try and answer those. And you know, people want to know how to get involved with this and, and all that sort of stuff. And I thought about doing it, but I just cannot drive these cars. I, I just cannot do it. I have to forget everything I've ever driven and forget how to drive and then relearn how to drive. Um, but just some, some facts about this um, about this track. The long straight that sort of runs from Newry Corner down to Mountford Corner, which is the final corner of the track, that tight right-hander that we saw Enzo and, and Jake going through on their qualifying laps, That's it's, a, it's about one and a half miles long. Uh, so about as long as the longest straights you'll find in Formula One and the the Dirting Ho on the on the Nordschleifer and things like that, and it's uh, it's just it's just speed. How they how they drove on these tracks back in the day, it was uh, it must have been something something great to watch, especially when they brought the Formula One cars here, you know, Jim Clark and Jack Brabham in in 1968 and well, 1967. Actually, 1968 was the the last round of. Uh, well, last year that they ran the Tasman series. Just seeing what other other um, landmarks on here. Uh, there's the Long Bridge. Uh, there's also the Kings Bridge, which cross over the, the river that we saw earlier. Very narrow, so overtaking is gonna be borderline impossible uh, through there. And like I say, it's kind of like Le Mans light Mountford Corner being a bit like, uh, you see on that shot there, it's a bit like uh, Indianapolis and um, the corner after an Indianapolis at Le Mans, which I've forgotten the name of, uh, but in reverse. So people have to be very careful about overtaking. Those straw bales probably will end up on the track at some point and they will remain solid. And there's uh, there's the King's Bridge at the southern end of the, of the track. So just after the viaduct. And then we'll see the pub at Longford Corner, probably in the next shot. Yep, yep there's the pub. And then the next straight after that is uh, one to one tenth of a mile, if I'm reading that correctly. And the race is underway as everybody bolts off the start line. Let's see what <laughs> this is? This is madness. Oh, this is absolute madness. Two hours underway. A car starting from the pit lane at the back as the cars race up towards uh, the the viaduct for the first time. Some nice big speeds as uh, we see a tree and cars getting on the grass and trying to navigate their way through and if you break too late as uh, some cars probably making contact in the background they navigate the viaduct bit of dust being kicked up at the front uh, Simicic showing us being in the pit lane right now uh, Fatsy is just 1.1 seconds behind so there might just be a glitch in the timing system but like I say, this is all brand new for everybody, so we might have a few kinks to iron out over the course of the first few rounds. But it appears that everybody is still leading, uh, everybody's still on track, so everything's sorted itself out now. Great. So, Simicic leads from Fatsy, who leads from Richie Axelson. And then we've got Parva in fourth ahead of Nico Hillebrand. Simicic enjoying a half a second lead as we see Enzo Fatsy in behind, trying to slipstream down one of the long straights. And get hard on the brakes now into I think this might be uh, that might be Newry Corner over the north end of the track 
and then straight down the long straight. So I, I'd actually <laughs> try to figure out what the. Uh... Okay, maybe not. No, this is uh, this is just going over the long bridge, and then they'll turn right and come back down. So the, the road will bank off to the left there. As you can see, that drives up towards uh, Launceston, where you'll find the Simmons Plains uh, track that these Fiat supercars in the modern era. And now they are on the, the very, very long straight. So like I say, one and a half miles long, almost. Very, very long, very, very fast. And now they're on the straight properly now, as we see the onboard from Enzo Fazzi's Ferrari in the bottom right-hand corner. Speed climbing slipstream. What slipstream? There's very little down, well, there's no downforce, so it's all mechanical. And trying to put down all of that engine power coming out of the corners, as we see it appears that uh, Simicic might be pulling away ever so slightly. Let's see what kind of car that Simicic is driving. Uh, Simicic is also in the Ferrari. And then we've got uh, Axelsson and uh, Hillebrand in the Jag. As we see, something got wiped out. I think it was a brake marker, but that is the end of the first lap. As uh, Fancy appears to have taken the lead. So I'm sorry if I missed that. It's trying to keep up with everything that's going on. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, it looks like Simicic went too far into the final corner. That's put him back down to fourth position behind Axelsson, behind the brand and your overall race leader, Fatsy. As we look backwards now onto the helicopter cam, this is Army leading the the, uh, the two-litre class here. Or well, the three-litre class. I think I'm reading things wrong here. But either way, it's... Uh, Oh yeah, because they're, they're all bunched up together, aren't they? Some lockups in the background. Some people getting onto the grass as they try to get across the bridge without whacking into the into the fences there. Down towards the pub, right-hander, and now we're actually into the town of Longford. So another another straight along here. It's about 1.1 miles or something like that, and then they cross over the railway line. You can just see that there. A little bit of air coming off them. You see more dust being kicked up in the background as they're trying to get the power down and trying to use as much of the road as possible. It is a public road, so they are going to try and maximise what they can. There's no runoff areas. You know, this is completely different to what you'll have seen anywhere in, uh, in motorsport before. And it's probably the closest we're ever going to get to uh, to the proper historic racing. It's a massive lockup from the 202 in behind. Which is uh, suboptimal. Sal Army leading the class here, driving the Maserati. Car's getting very, very close in behind. So he's driving the uh, in Japanese uh, racing colours, and this is the other thing about this series: everyone's driving in you know national colours of. You know, where they might be from, or you know where the where their the family's from, or or anything like that. So, the, basically, the rules said that you've got to keep the the color of the original car. So, if you're driving the Jag, it's got to be green, and if you're driving the Ferrari, it's got to be red. As we get a replay here, this will be uh, Yane Simicic just going a little bit too deep into the final corner. The thing just didn't pull up, <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna style it out. And there we go back in, into the race should be able to make up the time he's lost uh, Jenny Simicic three time as another car goes a bit too deep into the final corner as, as we're saying Jenny Simicic a uh, three time Formula Sim Racing World Champion now so definitely knows his way around R Factor 2 but it's great to see the the, the sort of veterans of R Factor 2 you know, trying this thing out just as a bit of fun uh, Nico Hillebrand is actually driving in goggles and a hat and a polo shirt, so yeah, he's gone full hardcore mode for this. You can see the car's just getting a little bit light over that hump, and now trying to get it all pulled up, turning the tyres into proverbial 50 pence pieces as they go under the viaduct again. And we're already six minutes into this race, seven minutes into this race. Good, uh, good maths. Just checking in with uh, with chat as things have gone a little bit quiet now. Looking at Martin Bayer. He's driving, uh, I think it's a Gordini, if, I can, if my memory serves me. Bayer. 
Yep, that's the Gordini T24S. Very good looking car. Chasing down Ami in the two litre class. I think it's just a little bit messed up because Ami's in the two litre class leading some of the three litre guys, so it's put the two litres above the three litres on the timing board, but we'll uh, we'll figure this out as we go along. Like I've, I've said uh, several times right now, it's, uh, it's new for everybody. But so far, it's absolutely brilliant to watch as we now see Nico Hillebrand chasing Enzo Fazzi down. And then there's uh, GP laps in behind driving the uh, the blue Jag in uh, painted in uh, the blue American colours. So like I say it's all uh, it's all old style, no sponsors on the cars, all national colours, but with like little bits and pieces for the individual driver. And this is Hillebrand making a move and that is the lead taken. Jag just having a bit more straight line speed than the Ferrari. It should have a bit more stopping power. Commentator's curse as he's uh, done the full simmer chitch and needs to style it out again. As we've got a car in the pits already and this is something else that will have to happen. Pit stops. The tyre wear is on 3x but the fuel is on 1x. Uh, so the drivers will need to stop. And the other thing is that R Factor 2 has collision in the pit lane, so the pit stops will be a little bit manic when people are trying to try and pit and gain time and things like that. So Hillebrand carrying on. Let's see an onboard. See no gloves, just goggles and a hat. As uh, so I just saw it in, uh, in, in in the chat for one of the... Yeah, it's uh, Erky saying that drivers from this era are built different. Yes, they were absolutely crazy. But ten years after the war, so it's kind of like, ah, what could possibly go wrong? That adrenaline buzz of the time. I think it was Damon Hill that said, you know, being seen to do something brave this soon after the war was, was the thing. Was, there we go, there's the railway line. Oh, a little bit of air. Just, just a little bit of air. Simicic up to third as the result of Hillebrand's mistake. Watching the uh, Slovenian in his Ferrari. Gets it nicely pulled up as Hillebrand overshoots the corner ever so slightly in behind. Maybe still pushing a tiny bit. Richie Axelson up into second place as we see the helicopter view of uh, Rujash making a move. I took the outside line for, for that so on that Martin Bayer. Fantastic racing this early into the race. We've barely done 10 minutes, so it's, it's flying by at the minute. Crossing the South Esk River. This is the other good thing. It's just the details, the little details in these uh, in these tracks that just sort of add to the overall immersion as it all gets a bit tightly wound in behind. I think somewhere in that is uh, Reese Gardner, better known as Southpaw Racer. We'll probably do a uh, totally useless track guide for this place uh, next week or something like that. Frantic Godrecki under pressure from several cars. Almost been bump drafted along this long straight. Just trying to consult my map. I think this is down the back end. Uh, th these coming up to the, the second last corner, well, up to the last corner, I should say, as uh, fastest lap now set by Axelson. A little bit of a cheeky move in the background there. Godrecki hangs on to his position for now. But what's going to happen on the exit? We can see some of the, the hay bales almost strewn onto the track. That can cause some damage to, to the cars that are going to hit them. And also at Spa at Eau Rouge, there's plenty of those hay bales that can cause absolute carnage if you hit them. As we now go back to uh, the battle between uh, Richie Axelson and Enzo Fazzi. It looks like Axelson has taken the lead from the Dutchman. The man using uh, Poising Bell pedals it leads the race, 
and someone who works for Hoisingveld is currently following him, so uh, come on Enzo, sort it out mate. Simicic, about two seconds in behind uh, Fatsy at the minute, Hillebrand dropping back, must have had another incident at some point, Parva there in fifth. Uh, Rujasu currently leading the three litre class, uh, it's now sorted itself back out now that Ami's dropped uh, below. So top through there, Rajasu, Bayer, and uh, Borgier. Uh, is that supposed to be like a play on Borgier or something like that? Borgier. And then you've got Ami Gardner in second place in uh, the two litre class, and then Britain third in, well, the two litre class. So pretty much everybody's still running as well. There, there were fears that there was going to be a massive pileup at turn one, but everybody's been very well behaved as we look backwards from Axelson's car to the Ferrari. We've seen the, the lead swap a few times, so maybe they're trying to do something like they do in NASCAR with the uh, the fuel saving, hang in behind, lift off, save a bit of fuel, excuse me, and then flip-flop the positions a bit, work together, try and build the lead. Seems to be working, though, if it is indeed what they're doing. Now, if this was a GT3, you'd see a massive dive bomb here, but nope. And, oh, what's happened here? Was that... Enzo braking early, or was that just Jag straight line speed? As the uh, Jag gets a little bit wiggly under braking. But it's okay, because he's got a Jag. There we go, we've said it. Another car in the pit lane. As the leaders come through again. And then a new faster slap for Axelson. As uh, Humperdinck Fangbonus says, nice GP laps in first. Well, I should hope so, it's his league. Um, but he, he's rapid in these cars. Has to be said. Oh, Borgia has had a uh, an issue. Just took a sip of coffee and then saw the, uh, the car spun around. It's not going to be not very good for the, the Gordini driver driving in the French national colours. So I do apologise if I'm if I'm pronouncing any of these uh, these names wrong. But yeah, Englishman butchers foreign words. More at eleven as uh, they come flying over the top towards the viaduct. But this is the other great thing. It's so close at the minute. There's plenty of overtaking. Plenty. Oh, here we go. That's uh, that's suboptimal. Uh, I think that was that was Bourgier that's just got sent into a ditch. Um, that's not good. As uh, Cijek and another one of his uh, fellow classmates dip, duck, diving and dodging down towards the pub and out the other side. So I'd like to see what happened to uh, Bourgier on that one. He just. <laughs> Just got dumped into into a ditch. Maybe he needs to top his water up, I don't know. Doing Reese Gardner now. Trying to make a move in his Maserati. Got three Maseratis running line astern, as Martin Brundle loves to say. See if I've got any more information to, to give to you. So as uh, has, has been properly pointed out by by T Bone in the chat, uh, the, the the Jag is on discs and the Ferrari is on drums. So I think it was just the fact that Jake was allowed to break a lot later uh, in, into that final corner compared to Enzo. Um, but there are other cars that they can pick. Uh, there's you know there's Mercedes. Uh, there was actually supposed to be a Mercedes in the race uh, driven by Casper Stolzer, but Casper's had to unfortunately pull out and Casper also a, an R Factor 2 uh, veteran. Uh, there's also like things like Fraser Nash's, Triumphs, Lagondas, Astons uh, and things like that. Uh, the, the Gordini and the Aston tend to flip-flop a little bit because they have different strengths, but it looks like uh, for the minute anyway that the, the Jag is the most uh, balanced car uh, on the grid. But the thing is, once you've picked your car, you cannot change it. 
so it, it kind of stops the the drivers from just picking whatever the best car is for for each track. So they'll probably have done a lot of testing and figured out, okay, this is the more balanced car. Or you know, in the case of people like Enzo and, and Symmetry, so they're probably they're just having a bit of fun. So they might have just picked the mean car or or whatever it is and and things like that. So there's there's a good uh, spread, and as more people qualify, you know, the the Jag might be absolute absolutely awful at another track whereas uh, an Aston might be brilliant so people might not qualify for this round because of the car they've picked they might qualify for another round because of the car they picked and it's just everything will flip flop and it will all, all look really good come the end of the season as these three cars now getting even closer to each other cannot be separated oh here we go here's a lunge is that car going to pull up is there going to be contact oh great braking stir Almost wiped the front end of that Maserati off as they cross the railway line again. We're now on board with Reese Gardner down in the bottom right-hand corner. Fantastic graphics as well, made by Simply Race for the purposes of this broadcast. If you're in the Milton Keynes area, do go and uh, visit the Sim Racing Centre. Slipstream kicking in a little bit, now a little bit of a lift from Reese there. All the gear ratios will have been adjusted and things like that, so it might be just topping out, just lift off. Engine's going to overheat. You can actually boil the brakes. If you're doing heel and toe, you can probably blow the engine because the engine wears out and things like that. So we've got a decent simulation of what could happen. It would be great to have the full proper failures that you could have seen in things like Grand Prix 3 and Grand Prix 4, so like the transmission can blow and, and stuff like that. But like I say, a lot different. If you're enjoying what you are seeing... I do like the streams. Um, do check out simplyrace.co.uk as well. Because without them we wouldn't have this uh, this broadcast as Axelson sets another fastest lap. Pulls out his lead to about two seconds, so the guy's flying out there. Letting you hear the engine noise down the long back straight, hard on the brakes. See your class leaders at the top. So there's a, there's a lot of detail on the screen for you, so you can sort of keep track. Uh, unfortunately, the, the numbers aren't working properly. That's just a limitation in the mod currently. So yeah, unfortunately, that's not uh, not something we can we can fix at the minute. Reese Gardner holding third place in his uh, in his Maserati here. As the yellow comes out in sector one, so someone's gone off. There, the hashtag HRRC. So do share the stream. There's plenty of time left for, for people to join in and see what's going on. Great overhead shot as they come over the river once again. And just as a reminder, for the, the rest of the season, we had the, the Rouen test race that uh, Jake broadcast from his POV. We've got Longford, which is the race today. That's going to last for two hours. We've then got a Spa two hour on the old Spa. It's a Spa 1967 that's in our Factor 2. Then we've got six laps of the Isle of Man. Good luck keeping up with the map on that one. We've then got the three hours of Dundrod, which is a track that I've uh, not really seen much of. Is that, is that a car going slowly there? That car's got damage. Oh, dude, escape if you're damaged. You're going to wipe someone out. Um, the Targa Florio, well, the three laps of Targa Florio, and then two hours of Le Mans 1966 to end the uh, to end the season, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait for that, especially if uh, if Jake decides to do another season of this with 1960s cars and does Le Mans with the Ferrari GT4, not the Ferrari GT40, the Ford GT40. That would be absolutely great, and probably something I'll try and qualify for because I absolutely love that car. Oops, excuse me. As we see a battle ha uh, happening. On the bottom right hand side of your screen. It's going to be interesting to see if this one gets uh, pulled off 
uh, correctly. And it's not like one driver's just bolted off into the distance and everybody's very spread out. Everybody seems to be very close. And uh, just to give you an idea of how close it has been, as oh, tiny little bit of contact, Reese Garden getting up the, the back end of the cars in front, giving him the hurry up. Driving his classic uh, Maserati like it's a, an Australian touring car by the looks. This is a great battle we're seeing at the bottom. Uh, the bottom right hand side of the screen as we see your race leader, the man who's made all this happen, leading the race by three seconds at the minute. And he's just going for a, a casual Sunday drive on, on what he would consider to be the wrong side of the, of the road. But this is the battle where it's all happening. We've got uh, Rodriguez, Britton and Gardner who have been locked like this for the last God knows how long and they haven't wiped each other out so fantastic driving from the three of them and yes just to, to answer the, the question there this isn't three classes of a 1954 Cobra it's, it's just the way the mod's been packaged so we'll try and get all that fixed for a later round of the season uh, so you've got like the proper 5 litre, 3 litre, 2 litre classes uh, but the, the names of the cars will need to be changed and things like that so it, it, it's pretty easy to work out so Matson, Matsantini is Maserati and you know, Jungle Cat is obviously Jag so it's it's it's, it's almost self-explanatory but um, either way great stuff to watch bit of fun for a Saturday afternoon who needs the French Grand Prix Gardner gets a little bit loose on the exit there. It's going to ruin his straight line speed a bit. And you can actually see now that we've got the uh, the manufacturer decals next to the position numbers. So you've got uh, Axelson there leading in the Jag, Simicic, Fatsi in the Ferrari, Hillebrand in the Jag, and uh, Robillard in the Ferrari as well. So we've had a, a position change a little bit further back in the 5 litre field. Rujasu leading the three litre field, Bayer in second place, Godrecki third in his Aston Martin. Uh, I think the ones that you can't really see are the Gordinis. And then basically Maserati Cup in the two leases. Looking back from Rodriguez's car here towards Jake Britton. It's all good stuff so far. So we're approaching the half hour mark as Rodriguez sets the new best lap time for the two litre uh, class. He's getting a little bit of a stomp on. Just over a tenth of a second in it as uh, Gardner's dropped off a little bit to just over one and a half seconds behind these two. Can he get the car pulled up to get under the viaduct? Oh, a bit of a slide, that's a mistake. Can't capitalise on it. Kicks up some dust in his face, or just trying to distract him, maybe. Britain's looking very racy in behind now. This is the thing with these uh, older cars. You can't do any of the tricks that you can try in modern cars. Can't dive bomb like you can in a modern car. Can't lob it in like you can in a modern car. These things take... It, it's it's, the, uh, it's the, the, the hangover meme with the, with the maths happening in front of his face. That's what driving these cars is like, because you have to forget everything you've ever learned driving a, a Formula One car or an Indy car or a GT3 or a prototype. And you've got to relearn how to drive as we now see too wide down the uh, down the straight here. It's like watching outside on the Birmingham Road at three in the morning at the minute. And Jake Britton has taken the lead of the two litre class here. Expect that to flip again within the next few laps. And another fastest lap for uh, Richie Axelson. Four and a half seconds over Jernay Simicic. That's good going.
once again, people in the live chat, if you're enjoying this, do like, do share, do subscribe as well if you're new to uh, e either of the two channels that are broadcasting this. And also, if, if you're not aware, go to GP Lap's YouTube channel where he's actually streaming his POV, uh, where you can just see a clear track ahead of him. As we now see the three litre guys, this is Martin Bayer following Rujasu. Some people using their real names, some people using their uh, screen names. I know some people will be thinking, why not use your real name? But some people did race under aliases back in the day. The, uh, the Thai prince that raced at the first Formula One Grand Prix at Silverstone in 1950 raced under a, a pseudonym. And apologies that the, the noise of the river is like a 737 trying to take off. It'd probably be a to have a comet at this era, wouldn't it? 737 wasn't for a, about another 10 years, but we now have a, a new best lap time in the 2 litre category by somebody that's not even in the top 5, Silverwolf, the 240.3. That's a fantastic time there. The angry bees that are the two litre cars flying by. Would love to hear what these cars would be like with the new R Factor 2 sound engine. Another yellow in sector one. It's never any good news. There's a. Uh, ooh! That's. That was a bit Larry. <laughs> it looks like Britain got the better exit even with that uh, kick up of dirt because the Portuguese driver and Rodriguez can't keep up. Just a reminder there of your class leaders. Damare, Rujasu and Britain, your leaders. With seven DNFs, I've just been told. Uh, sorry that we can't catch all of them, but we did see one of them. Uh, we literally ending up in, in the drink, which isn't uh, always good as Hillebrand has now got a bit of a stomp on putting in the fastest lap of the 5 litre guys, currently running in uh, in third place as, uh, oh, looks like Fatsy's dropped off the face of the planet. Is he one of those retirements? He is. starting to wear out, well sorry, fuel starting to run down in these uh, cars, so they're going to be going a little bit quicker in a straight line. But great to see half an hour in and we've still got plenty of battling going on. Here's one of them, David Sijek. Just get the slipstream on, past the Maserati, down the inside. And there we go. Move done. Although Hammer is coming back in his Maserati. If we can get a, a run on Cjek down the straight here. Looks like he's coming back here. Side by side past whatever that circular thing is in the background. Looks like a, like a water storage unit or something. And hard on the brakes here. Aurelian Hammer has got the move done. We got the place back from Cjack here. Under the tree, towards the bridge again. Be interesting to see how they manage to start lapping each other at that point of the race as well. Because that bridge is barely wide enough for one and a half cars, let alone two. So you might have to might have to just be patient. As uh, we'll see it. Um, see what I mean about missing your breaking point. You're off.
The yellow's coming out as uh, people potentially boil their brakes a little bit. All of the cars pretty much apart from the... Uh, okay, this is what happened to, uh, to Fatsy then. Oh, no. Yeah, that... That's a that's a tree. <laughs> it looks like it, oh, it looks like no that, that looks more like uh, internet issues that does. That's unfortunate then. Yeah, it's a bit getting told in my ear that it's uh, looks like a bit of rubber banding. So very unfortunate because that was uh, shaping up to be a very good battle as we see uh, Hamart getting a freebie again. Gardner's made his way up into second place in the two-litre class. As the Britain sets another fastest lap in that class as well. And here comes Rodriguez once again. He is uh, going to try and get that position back from the Australian in front of him. Looks like we're the only battle on track at the minute, so they look like they're the closest together. Yeah. Mighty May saying he's off to Perth. That is actually correct, because the, the map I've got shows uh, where, the, where the roads go off to. So if you carry on straight on at that corner they've just gone to, you actually go and follow the railway a bit. If you turn left, you head down into the town of Longford. Towards the northwest coast, maybe. Oh, Jake, what happened there, man? <laughs> He's so far ahead. He's got time to pop some wheelies. Looks like your only battle now, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, this Britain Gardner Rodriguez one, still separated by about two and a half seconds, the three of them. But anything can happen, as we've seen here today. And even with that wheelie pop, <laughs> Jake is still pulling away from Simicic. It has to be said, this uh, battle for the uh, lead of the three-liter class isn't over just yet, because 1.7 seconds between Rajasu and Bayer, and with uh, pit stops to come, Another fastest lap for Britain. The guy's an animal. Ah, it looks like the what happened. What we saw happen to Jake on uh, on the TV stream is similar to what happened to Max Verstappen at um, at Le Mans, where it looked like some sort of carnage had happened but really it's just uh, the way that the, the broadcast is, is going so all's good all's good with Jake's car gap was sort of starting to sort of close down between him and Simicic but it looks like he's, uh, he's pulling it back now The battle on your screen currently between Jake Britton in the Maserati and Reese Gardner also in the Maserati. It'd be great if Reese can get a win at home here. In the two litre class here, we've got Hyla and friends. In the 
Brist uh, so we've got a Hyla driving the Bristol here. One of the few Bristols in this class. It's definitely the Maserati show in the 2-litre class right now. dirty air to worry about in these cars allowing them to, to follow they oh well, that's just getting really close now between Hyler and the 307 in behind him on board with the 307 a bit of a kick of dust and that's going to be an easy position Hyler just getting too much on the grass maybe he was trying to pull his tires down it looks like Hyler's gonna try and have another go the 209's uh, coming in for a, a bit of a look it's like watching Daytona at the minute. Always scrap for fifth position in in class. Everybody being very well behaved. It's great to see. One car trying to take the outside line. Maybe try a little bit of a cheeky switch back on the exit. Forced to take the long way around the corner. Is that going to mess things up for that sort of burgundy and sky blue car in behind no because that one appears to be making a pit stop pulling into his pit box fuel and tyres we get straight back out there but we cut back now to to Hyler's Bristol the 307 what appears to be two Maseratis in behind so Britain versus or England versus Italy once again Again, apologies for the uh, the sound of the the sound of the stream on the stream. As a Silver Wolf 07 sticks his Maserati at the inside, that's a lockup, avoiding action from Hyler. And that means that the 346 has also managed to take the position, so that's two positions lost now for Hyler. Oh, a bit of a wobble there from uh, from Silver Wolf, I think there. No, sorry, Silver Wolf's the, the 219. No, it's not. He's the 346. Okay. Yeah, Simicic and Hillebrand in the pit lane at the front, so it's uh, time for the leaders to start pitting. Jake about to overcut the uh, the living daylights out of them. Hillebrand's actually jumped Simicic here. Uh, that was almost an F in chat. And there was a drag race between the two uh, Maseratis down here, Civil War 07. In the right hand lane. Big braking zone coming up, so who's going to be the bravest here? And like I say, you miss your braking point, you're off. 3, 4, 6, getting a bit of a wobble on. He's got it pulled up. And he's through. And here comes Hyler in his Bristol. Entering another drag race as they come across the start finish line. But coming up after this is the tricky sort of turn one, turn two of the viaduct corner. Not the sort of place you want to be chucking the car in as Rodriguez has DNF from the race. The man who was once the class leader in the two leads of class has retired from the race. We'll have to see what, what caused that. Was it a crash? Was it fuel? Was it something going wrong with the car? Well, that's, uh, that's going to be gutting for the Portuguese driver. 
promotes Hyla up into fifth, Silverwolf into uh, into fourth, and uh, that said though, Silverwolf 16 seconds behind uh, Cookie, who is just driving on his own in third place in the two litre class. So Cookie can just keep it on the track. He's looking good for a podium in his uh, debut round as. Uh, Richie Axelson now in the pit lane and has been so for about uh, 35 seconds. So it says P37 and then the other timer. So it's the time actually in the pit lane and the time he's been stopped in brackets. So that's how you work that one out. So similar to how it is in, uh, in Formula 1. So here's a replay. Rodriguez. Oh, no, that's not good. Yeah, that car's, that car's done. Bent suspension. He's, he's done for the day. Pulls it right over to the side. And that'll be an escape and a F out of 10. Car's started to get a little bit slidey now that the tyres are wearing off. But bias ply tyres, they last forever, don't they? As, uh, here we have Demare. In third, after that pit stop, Simicic takes the overall lead of the race. Parva in front probably still needs to pit. Lap traffic ahead of uh, Jake here. Easy pickings for him. So Ferrari 1 2. Jake. Rich Axelson, GP Laps, whatever we're calling him at this point of the show. He's in third. Costa in fourth. Hillebrand in fifth. Uh, that's a little bit of a bug in the timing system that's just saying that he's been in the pits for uh, 42 seconds. Jake closing ever so slowly towards Parva. Now he's just showing off a little bit of a drift. You just know he's on camera. Uh, to answer your question, Red Sim Racing, uh, in qualifying, uh, the two litres were doing about 238s, something like that. Um, they were actually in with the three leader classes, so they can hold their own for a little bit. Um, it, it, it should probably pop up at some point because fresh tyres, the rubber getting down on the track should get a little bit faster. We've got the split screen view once again on board with the Jag and off board with the Jag. And a little bit of a mistake there. Should be an easy one. There you go. Back into second place. So now it's uh, it's back on between Jake and Simoncic. With the way that Jake was pulling away from Simoncic beforehand, who knows? It would be a uh, it would be good to to put on his CV. I beat Yerne Simoncic. See Tilo Neusch in his Maserati, part of the uh, the Maserati Cup down there in the two liter series. It's the battle for ninth position in the uh, the traditional German silver. Actually, don't know what colours that is in front on the 363. So Kuba Malmshack, so be the colours of uh, of uh, of one of the, the Eastern European countries 
around this time. You, go, you see the French, French blue just going past in the shot. Another drag race as the Maserati unleashes all of those Italian stallions to take the position. That's him up into ninth position then. If he can get it balled up in time. Yes, there we go. That's a good overtaking move into the final corner. That's another lap done for the two leaders. Where pretty much all of the action has been uh, in this race. Is that going to be another... That's another position, so they've just taken one off the car that's just pitted. The 346 car there. Wobble there under braking, saves it, lives to fight another day. Seeing a couple more pit stops in the top two categories. Byers in the pit lane, Parvers in the pit lane. And Parvers now out of the pit lane. So that'll be uh, full service, fuel and tyres. And a reminder of your class leaders, Simicic in the 5-litre, Godrecki in the 3-litre, and Britain still holding the lead from Reese Gardner in the 2-litre. Uh, it looks like Reese Gardner's pitted because he's a long way behind now. Looks like Britain's going a tiny bit longer than everybody else. Tila Neusch still in a battle. Always fun to watch. So it looks like we've always got something going on, which is always good to see. That freshly tired and freshly fueled car in behind them as well will be looking to get by with the uh, superior grip. Yellow in sector three as well, so it looks like we've lost another driver. Hopefully they've recovered, managed to get back on with things. I believe it was Hyler. enjoying what you're seeing and you think oh I want to give this a go uh, head to the GP Labs discord uh, if you're watching this you're probably a fan of Jake anyway so uh, maybe if you're not a fan of Jake and you've come here through just standard YouTube browsing or you you watch what what I do uh, go to GP Labs discord through his uh, YouTube channel and uh, you can get signed up for the next round which will have its uh, pre-qualifying session announced on the discord See if you can get into the top 10 of the uh, the 5 litre, or maybe the top 16 of the 3 litre, or the top 14 of the uh, 2 litres. They actually had to take the 105% the from second place in all three categories because they were that close to each other. So it's, uh, it's all good as Alessandro Parva. There's a. Uh, of an overtaking move. I think that might have been on a slower class car, so nothing to worry about there. Car ahead. Leaving the pit lane. Nope, coming in for a stop. Right at the end of the pit lane. Would not want to be there if somebody loses control.
like I say, any questions about the series, any questions about what the, the cars are, anything like that, do leave them in the stream chat, we'll answer them. Do share the stream as well, and the uh, all of that good stuff. The series has had quite a lot of interest, which is great to see, because, well, it's different. This isn't your standard GT3 series, your standard endurance series, or your standard formula series. It's not very often you do get to see uh, a, a Historics League broadcast like this, so thank you to uh, Simply Race and to, to Jake for putting it all on. Uh, Sam Morris asks if there are any Mercedes-Benz 300 SLs. There would have been a 300 SL in the race, uh, driven by Kasper Stolzer, but uh, Kasper's had to pull out of the race uh, due to due to health reasons. Uh, couldn't make it. So the only it would have been the only Mercedes 300 SL on the grid as well, um, because the Mercedes is quite out of favour by the looks of things. Uh, he actually qualified with a 241.648, which is a, a decent time. It was the uh, the second last time, but still a decent time nonetheless. And uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it. And Casper also a. Uh, Casper being like Simoncic and, and Hillebrand, a veteran of R-Factor 2, so it would be great to see a, another known name, as it were, on the grid, but unfortunately couldn't be here, so he'll try and be back for the next one at, at Spa, which really is going to be a, a power circuit. And there is your race leader, Yerne Simoncic, three-time Formula Sim Racing World Champion, also doing very, very well in the uh, R-Factor 2 Formula Pro Series, Costa now in the pit lane. That will put Hillebrand into third position. Jake's starting to take a little bit of Simicic's lead out, but Simicic's still holding station. And there we go. For those of you wondering about the uh, two litre lap times, 238.5 fastest time in that category. So, yeah, Yerni, very, very good uh, in our Factor 2. One of the top drivers in our Factor 2. So, no surprise that he's leading a race. One of the nice guys in uh, sim racing as well. I've just been told that Britain's actually fourth overall currently, uh, despite leading the two liter class. That's why the that's why the 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 three liter and the two liter have now swapped over because Britain is now ahead of the lead three liter if that makes any sense so it's just a, a little bit of a quirk in the timing screen but hopefully once all the pit stops have cycled round and all that stuff it'll, it'll go back to normal uh, we've got an Aston Martin currently in the pit lane Dolan so you can see the top five in each uh, category yellow in sector one and that's now cleared so Simicic Axelson Hillebrand your top three in uh, five liter Britain, Gardner and Hyler in the 2.0-litre, and Rajasu, Godrecki and Bayer in the 3.0-litre, although that should be the other way around because of the thing we were just talking about. So Manchak in Maserati, 10th place in the 2.0-litre uh, category. This battle's been going on for quite a while now, so it's always something going on, always something going on is, uh, which is, uh, like I say, great to see. Apparently it was the same in the support race as well, the 5 litres beating out the 2 litres who beat out the 3 litres. But I guess that was that was what happened back then. You know, so was it 2017 at Le Mans where an LMP2 almost won the whole thing? Because the LMP1s had a mare and then Porsche won it with about an hour left. Would love to go to that pub. If I had a time machine, I'd go to that pub while the racing was on. I love how that guy's just got the the confidence to leave his car parked there. 
while people are just flying past. Approaching the halfway point of this race now, which is uh, which is good to see. So might be seeing two stops from some of these drivers. Maybe a little bit of a, a gas and go towards the end. And even change the tyres. So just a reminder that the, the fuel is on normal consumption, so 1x consumption. Tyres are on 3x consumption. So there is a, a little bit of uh, there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy between the two, but. It's just going to be one of those wait and see things. Manchak still in that little fight. This will be uh, Jake in his Jag coming up behind. So that that gap sort of spread out a tiny bit now. The gap's up to two seconds between Manchak and uh, the car he was fighting with. Another car there in the pit lane. And the, uh, the Jag should make easy pickings of that Maserati in front. So everybody now quite uh, quite spread out. But you can now see on the on the left hand side of the screen the three litres are now back in front of the two litres. So everything's now been shuffled back round nicely. We're now looking at Jackson Robbiard in the Ferrari. In uh, Full US colours. You can tell it's from America because it says US in huge letters on the side. Well, on the back, I should say. Uh, Mighty, Mighty Mavs saying tyres not really wearing anyway, bricks on bricks. That's probably why they turned it up. But just as a, a pointer as to how the. Oh, is it the other way around? Oh, my mistake. But either way, uh, the, the, the way that the pace of the, the two and the three litres has been is so close. So Martin Bayer qualified fastest in the three litres at a 2.38 dead. Uh, then Jake Britton in the two litres did a 2.38.6. So just over half a second between the two of them. But then Reese Gardner was the next fastest, 2.38.678. And then Frank God uh, Frank Godrecki in the Aston Martin 238.869. So people separated by tenths and hundredths across the entire uh, two and th uh, three litre series, which is always uh, good to see. There we go, Yoni Simicic, the Slovenian, leading this race. We're now officially past the half hour. Oh, sorry, the half away uh, mark of this race. It's my first time comment commentating endurance in a very long time. So I do apologise if it's uh, all a bit broken up. Gardner and Hyler in the pit lane, apparently. Don't see them in the pit lane. Oh, there they are. They were hidden behind the uh, behind the garage. Uh, what are the regulations for a car to qualify as a 50 sports car? Uh, whatever's in the mod pack, to be honest. Uh, so there is the Jaguar D-Type, the Ferrari 375, uh, the Gordini T24, there's the Mercedes 300 SL, there's um, Bristol's, there's, there's all sorts. Uh, it's just that people have picked what they think is best for the for the this particular track, or actually for the whole season because they've got to use the same car for the whole season, uh, assuming they keep qualifying. So it's basically what it's basically all the cars that were at Le Mans in 1954. Rajasu leading the three litre class, the Finnish driver. It's great to, to see the flags of the, the individuals on screen to figure out where everybody's from. 
and you can also learn what the national racing colours of Finland are. So it's entertaining and educational. You love to see it. Okay, 3x fuel and then 1x tyres. Okay. I know it was one way around. Just consulting my um, piece of paper that's got the cutoffs. Uh, just to, to look at where people got cut off. So, uh, Guy Ladouche. Uh, was the 16th fastest in the 3 litre category. Uh, the first guy that got cut off was Nikolai uh, Bogatriev. I hope I got that correct. He was a 241.875, so a couple of tenths there. Uh, it was even closer in the, uh, in the 5 litre category because Alessandro Pava did a 235.8, and then Nilsino, who was the first to be cut off, was a 235.871, so highly competitive. Um, field um, and then in the two litre category um, Booch, Booch Magoo that can't be a real name um, did a 241.339 versus a 241.331 which actually got into the race so that must be absolutely gutting and then Simicic going faster so it looks like uh, Simicic has been playing the long game is the, the gap to, uh, to GP laps has increased. So, uh, so, all the, so it looks like a symmetry probably sandbagging a little bit. Uh, what happened to Gardner? That's a good question. What did happen to Gardner? I know, I, I know he pitted. So maybe some others need to pit as well, and that will filter around again. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll try and find out for you. actually gone up a little bit now. It looks like uh, Jake's lost a couple of seconds. So maybe a little bit of a mistake from the Jag driver. Uh, it looks like, okay, South Pole Race is still running, just had an off at the end of the long straight. Good to know. to watch these uh, cars just... Oh! Wrong way, sir. There you go. Style it out. Carry on. Britain enjoying a 43-second uh, lead as it stands. Huge lock-up there for whoever's in front of Martin Bayer. Almost an unsafe rejoin from the 2-1-2. Let's... Uh... I've got Drecky. Going uh, a little bit too deep into the final corner. Still survives, though. Lives to fight another day. The people people having offs at the end of the long straight seems to be a, a common theme. Simicic, 234.1. So, Simicic, uh, probably just... Uh, Uh, starting to manage the gap a little bit. But considering it's a two hour race, he doesn't need to bolt off into the distance immediately. He can just sort of hang and then and then go. He has made a pit stop, it has to be said, and he, he jumped Jake in the pit stop, so yeah, he managed to find enough of a swing in that. But he is one of the, the best drivers in our factor too, so he knows what he's doing.
It's been the battle for second place in the three litre category, Martin Bayer versus uh, Godrecki. Oh, huge lockup. Uh, a little bit of a kick of oversteer on the exit. That's going to bring Godrecki back into it. Going to have a drag race down the main straight here by the looks of things. So I've got a couple of kinks and then it, it sort of straightens out. Looking back from uh, Bayer's car here. Did he get enough of a drive off that corner to keep Godrecki behind him? But that... That Maserati is getting a little bit closer. Sorry, that uh, sorry that uh, Aston Martin getting a little bit closer. Doesn't look like it's got the legs. Braking early. Cordini able to break a little bit later, or is it? Ooh. Flash of the lights there. <laughs> I think that was a. I think it was, think it was a, a sorry flash rather than a what are you doing flash. Sorry flashes tend to be a on, off, whereas what are you doing flashes are, you know, 90s rave. Uh, is this a circuit or a course that has a start and separate finish? Uh, it is a course. Yeah, think Le Mans light. Notice those uh, white tyres on the insides of some of the corners. Apparently, that's what Enzo Fazzi hit. That was what, uh, what sent him off. The as uh, Bayer and Godrecki come just to the, out the, the outskirts of uh, Longford. Better exit from Godrecki this time round. Still seeing the bottom right hand corner. Another car coming in behind. Uh, oh, Nico Hillebrand's out of the race. Two of the main, sort of the main guys to watch, out of the five-litre category. But uh, Bayer and Godrecki still fighting. In the meantime, a couple more cars being brought into things here. Uh, Nitramzen and uh, yeah, just Nitramzen writes uh, probably a lap down or something like that. say always something going on. I need to find out what happened to uh, to Nico at some point as well. I didn't see anything uh, regarding yellow flags. So we're now into the final 50 minutes of the race. Blue flags being shown at the side of the track, so it's all going to get a bit, a bit leery. I think that's actually Simicic coming through in the white and gold uh, Ferrari. He's starting to gap Jake a little bit in behind. Oh. Uh, looks like he's a, yeah. Looks like a game crash. Unfortunate. Ten non-finishes, which is good. Still got thirty people running. Sorry that we haven't been able to show everybody. We're just showing you what's the the, you know, the action as it's happening. We'll try and get as many people on on camera as we possibly can. Still watching this uh, Martin Bayer battle. He's actually lost a couple of positions by the looks of things. In all of that, while we're trying to figure out what happened to uh, different people.
Jake's picked up the pace a little bit, but that gap sort of goes between about 12 and 15 seconds, so... Simicic may have to pit again, but then again, he's, uh, he's pretty good at saving fuel and all that stuff. No Tramsen in uh, full Danish colours. Shout out to my brother, who lives in Denmark. On board with the Danish driver now. Looking up the backside of Godrecki. You know, I'm assuming he's in uh, Polish racing colours. Closing, closing a little more, closing still, a little bit of rubber banding. Good on Godrecki for not just parking it in the middle of the road and then picking a side. Like Max Verstappen at Spa that one year. But it looks like uh, Nitramsen has got the, the drag. Can he get it pulled up now? Because that's the one thing when you're racing in a, in a long straight, you forget where your braking markers are. Did that in a race at Le Mans. Was too busy watching the guy I was trying to out drag down the mall sand and missed the chicane completely. Nobody saw it, it's fine. Looks like we've got Bayer in the pit lane. That should get him to the end of the race, I think. Tires and fuel. But now with the retirement of uh, Hildebrand, it means that uh, Richie Axelson is the only Jag left in 5 litres. Another American keeper driving the Aston Martin uh, in a more a more purple colour compared to the. Uh, I know he's showing off with the camera, uh, in, compared to the sort of the darker blue that uh, Jake and uh, the other American that we've seen today are running. Maybe he's a huge Prince fan. And it turns out Silvino Rodriguez, who we were asking about before, actually retired with brake failure. Which is uh, unfortunate, but it's just that one of those things that happens in these cars. On board with, uh, with Hyla here. Polish racing colours, white with the red speed stripe. You can see the long straights of uh, the area around Longford here, past the farms, farm buildings. It breaks just before the 200 meter board. Car ahead, full position. Using the inside of that corner, it's not like dipped a little bit. Just use that to pull the car around. A little bit like uh, Indianapolis corner at uh, at, uh, at Le Mans, or the, the second Lesmo at uh, Monza over the bridge, you know, sort of over the far end of the track, so this is sort of the start of the very long straight, that road off to the, the left there, that's the one that runs towards Launceston and Simmons Plains and, and those sort of locations in uh, Tasmania. 
and then it's just right foot to the floor down here. Probably a little bit of a lift through these kinks, but now it's open the taps. Must have been absolutely terrifying. Any more questions on how to get involved, that kind of thing, do leave them in the chat. Just letting you you hear the, the sounds and let the racing do the talking, but if you need to know anything, do ask away, as someone, I think, just bought the farm. Oof. Good save. As uh, it gets a little bit leery through the, the viaduct section, but any, any questions or anything like that about the series or... Everything like that, do leave them, obviously do share, do like, do all of that good stuff. Make the algorithm do its thing. And I uh, hope you're enjoying it, as that's a, that's not going to work in a million years. <laughs> 10 out of 10 for trying. Reese Gardner back up to fourth as the result of, of all that stuff that's happening, so seems to be recovering. Car just leaving the pits. Gudrecki in third position in the three litre class here in his Aston Martin behind the two. As uh, all symmetry is now pitted, that's put GP laps back in the lead, so things flip flopping. So that will put uh, Jake back into the lead by a we're at 30 seconds or something like that, but you know, Jake's probably got a pit again anyway. So expect Simicic to be back in the lead by the by the end of the race. Jake, Rajasu, and Britain, your three class leaders. Britain with a one minute lead over Cookie in second place. Uh, I think there's a pit stop in that somewhere, as we see the man behind the, the series. He's on uh, in the lead. He's got about 40 minutes remaining to try and win this race. And I've just been informed. Uh, through the Simply Race chat, that uh, that Hyler is doing this, and then he's off to do the 24 hours of Spa on iRacing. Uh, what a nutcase is the is the actual term that was used by Chris in the, the Simply Race YouTube uh, stream chat. I don't know how he can go from two totally different, like going from going from Alpha to two GT3s to iRacing GT3s is one thing. Going from a 1954 Le Mans car to a GT3 in another sim is even madder. Best of luck to you. That's fantastic. It's a bit like um, when uh, Jan von der Heide started the 24 hours of Le Mans in the Virtual Endurance Championship in R-Factor 2. Then went and did the uh, the race all star battle at Azure, which is a which is a uh, street circuit in the south of France that you're not allowed to call by its real name because of licensing. Won that race at Azure, then went back to Le Mans and won that. He might be the only person to win two thirds of the Triple Crown in one one day. Crazy. 
So Ryan Kane from the Isle of Man. Fantastic stuff. He's going to have a home race soon. That's the first time I've ever seen the Manx flag in sim racing. I shall claim him as British. Cookie in the pit lane. That will put Gardner back into third place in that class. As it should do. Pit stops are long enough. Ryan Kane currently running seventh in the uh, two litre classes. You can see it's flipped around again. Britain is ahead of Nitramzen on track. Therefore, the two classes are flipped over. So once Nitramzen gets back in front of Britain, then the... Uh, it will go back to normal. So Jake's got nearly a minute on Simoncic. He still needs to pit, but a pit... It's going to be closed when they come out of the pit lane, though. It's probably about a 45 second stop. Plus about, what, five or six for the actual... Uh, for the actual getting through the pit lane. Nice. Douglas drifting from, uh, from Ryan Kane there. He'll be happy that that was caught on camera. Liam Dolan following in the Aston Martin DB3. Beautiful looking car painted in... Uh... I would say that is proper British racing green. You can debate that one until the cows come home in chat. There's so many different, so many different colours of British racing green. There's the tealy British racing green that you see on the Aston Martin in Formula One. Then there's Bentley racing green, which is really dark. Jag racing green, which is another. Uh, as uh, GP Laps Drake really getting a stomp on now, two thirty-three point five, fastest lap of the race. He's trying to make sure that that gap is big enough for his next stop. This is going to be great to watch. Half a second and then some on his previous best. He's taking this very seriously. <laughs> uh, Nathan Leonard asked, if I manage to place, would I be able to talk to the Simply Race crew on how to pronounce my name? Doesn't need to be answered, but my screen name is hard to pronounce at first. Depends on what it is, Nathan. Bruce Gardner now solidly in third. Depends on if he has to make another pit stop. He did make that mistake going into the final corner. a question for the for the stream chats as well how does this look in terms of immersion you almost you almost think you're watching the actual car sometimes it's it's great to see then just driving a trams and now on your uh, on your screen great split screen Graphics put together by Simply Race for this. Nice looking Gordini as well. off the limiter it's it's probably why they're not able to slipstream as uh, as hard as they probably want to remember when we go to Le Mans as we see uh, we're seeing an actual pit stop now there is collision in the pit lane in our factor 2 so he's got to be very careful coming in I commentated on a uh, 
on a GT3 race last year where uh, Risto Caput was a bit too aggressive with the old throttle coming out of the, the pits and snapped his rear wing off on another car that was that was parked. It was uh, just one of those things that happened. Uh, it's not in black and white and my British Pathé voice is slightly off. I did think about doing the British Pathé voice, but my British Pathé voice very quickly turns into 1940s American radio voice. That's Seth MacFarlane, Otter Brain Spark Plugs, the only Spark Plugs for you, that kind of thing. It's, uh, you really don't want to, to listen to that for, for two hours. Sandra Parva on your screen. It's only a second behind Robbiard in front. Just navigating the lap traffic. There goes Robbiard in front. Just one second behind the Frenchman. An Italian in a Ferrari. Just like the uh, Just like the old days. Just like Ascari. And uh, and Farina and Nuvolari and those guys. Harbour chasing down the podium positions in front. Yeah, it looks like Jake's pitted. Gap's now nine seconds. Very difficult to keep up with everything that's going on. Such is life when you're soloing a, an event. So it's now down for the last half hour between Jake and Simicic. Unfortunately, Mighty, Mighty Miles, we haven't got um, any uh, highlights for the, for the end of the race. We're having some trouble with the with the recording for it. So uh, the, the American 40s radio voice will be put it put in the in, in a box under the bed for a while, which is a good thing. Here is Cookie, a Canadian. Currently in fourth position, ten seconds off Gardner. With uh, half an hour remaining in the next five seconds. We'll be in for a, a thrilling conclusion. GP Laps takes on Jerni Simicic. Uh, sorry, I've got I've got <laughs> I've got my broadcast director in my ear telling me little bits of information that I can't see. So I was saying yeah to him for for some reason, but uh, as he just informed me, it's um, that both drivers have pitted. So Simicic probably may may have saved a little bit of fuel to try and push towards the end. Jake should be fine, but still, you're you're about to watch a battle to the end between. GP laps and one of the best drivers in our factor two. As we see some drivers making uh, some pit stops, or, or no, just a guy driving through the pits. It's not much of a drive through when there's no pit lane speed limit. I think Senna at Donington when he drove through the pit lane set in the fastest lap because there was no pit lane speed limit at that time. Uh, Shoe Moccasin saying a bit of bees buzz on the engine sounds. Two litre engines. It's almost like the uh, BTCC engines. These revved a little bit higher.
No, it's not a new, new question, Keith. Um, it's just the way that everything's been packaged um, with the mod. Um, so the only bits you need to take away from the three blocks is just S5, S3, and S2. Uh, five liter, five liter um, class, three liter class, two liter class. It's because the mod's based on the AC Cobra in R Factor 2. And the way it's all been packaged, it just means that the three classes are as they are. So we'll, we're going to try and get that fixed for, for the next round. It's Everything's new to everybody, so uh, we'll, we'll work on it. So don't worry, it's not, a, it's not a new question at all. Tilo Neusch. Locked in a battle here. So he's just out dragged his opponent down the long straight. Jake looks to have pulled out another couple of seconds on Simoncic, so really, really flexing out there at the minute. From from Neusch into uh, to the final corner. The corner that's been catching a lot of people out today. Now we're back on board with, with the German. Easily identified in his uh, silver arrow, his silver Maserati. Try not to hit those white tyres on the inside, otherwise you get sent into orbit. Whoa, that was a peak of revs. He wanted that thing to stop. Parva and Robillard making their final pit stops in the 5 litre category. That should be them sorted towards the end. They come up towards the pub. 25 minutes on the clock. This race has flown by. Oh, that's uh, that's a solid no out of ten right there. A little bit too uh, greedy on the gas pedal. Spun the rear out. Maybe a little bit of bodywork damage, but shouldn't be too bad. If your suspension is, is buckled, the thing will just start to turn to the to the right or to the left, depending on how you've damaged the car. And here's Jake again leading the race. The Jag's been pretty good over the course of the. Over the course of the the event, seems to be the the great. The, it seems to be the best all rounder. But do note that Jake has to use the Jag for every race this season, assuming he qualifies, obviously, which he probably will. Uh, so there might be circuits where the Jag isn't. So there'll be circuits where the Jag isn't as good. And there might be circuits where the Ferrari is better. So it, it, it'll all ebb and flow. So we've got Jake on your top left, Simicic on the bottom right. Nice little slide from Jake on the exit there. That'll be, uh, that'll be good for a Ruben Correa Alves super slow-mo. If you've been watching uh, some of the R-Factor 2 uh, official races, Nice to see that the, uh, the, the straw bales haven't ended up on the track at any point as well, because they cause unparalleled destruction. Uh, Rally Roy Madness asks, where are the class leaders in the overall classification at this point of the race? Well, uh, Jake's in first. Uh, at one point, I think Godrecki was in like fourth overall or something ridiculous like that. But we'll uh, we'll try and get that for you in a minute. The top five are as they are. Um, Godrecki overall, I actually don't know, and Britain overall, I don't actually know. So Godrecki is in P six. 
and Britain is in P7. So, so it's uh, so one, one, five, uh, one, six, and seven. There we go. We we got there eventually. We probably could have like a proper ticker across the top, but that would just it's just too much information on screen to be honest. That's just my opinion anyway. We tried to make it a look as 50s as possible, as period as possible, while still giving you the, the right amount of information. We'll probably try and get a live timing as well, at some point. Twenty-two minutes now on the clock. So, expect about another 10 laps, maybe? As uh, Jake gets it completely hooked up through the uh, the viaduct section as we <laughs> will we'll cut away to avoid the noise of the river. Um, Frannik Odrecki leading the the uh, two, sorry, the three litre class. Jasso just two and a half seconds in behind. Silverwolf 07 in the pit lane. And yes, Roman. Um, well, Roman. Uh, Jake is leading his own race. Which, uh, yeah, he, he's using a tricked up motor, I think. He's definitely cheating. But it's okay because he's got a jack. <laughs> uh, I set myself up for that one. a fantastic uh, performance from everybody we're still running with about 30 people of the 40 who started so there were worries that there would be an absolute carnage fest on lap one but everybody's been very well behaved any crashes have been because of driver error on their own or, or things like that or you know something going wrong with the car with the, the brakes that happened with a couple of a couple of guys but there's been nothing dirty there's been nothing there's been no like crashes from over aggressive dive bombing or anything like that so the, the driving standards in this have been absolutely brilliant it's been a, uh, a great advertisement for the league and uh, like I say if you have been enjoying it tell everybody about it try and get as many viewers as possible because we don't see anything like this we don't see we don't see vintage racing a lot at all in uh, in not just in our factor 2 but in, in general in our factor 2 probably has the best physics and force feedback for uh, for vintage racing so if uh, studio 397 are watching probably invest in that uh, proper gearbox simulation right about now after you've brought in the mp4 23 mclaren and the damage model obviously the important things first Humperdinck Fangboner saying that it's a smoky eunuch prepared Jag. Probably is. He's got about another 30 feet of fuel line underneath the car. Someone's uh, engine revs peaking. Going over a crest as we look at Cookie in the Maserati. It's actually showing the, the proper names of the, the cars now, which is, which is nice. Uh, what's the difference between the Cobra 5, 3, and 2? Um, ignore the Cobra bit. Just concentrate on the 5, 3, and 2, which is the, the motor, the, the engine size. It's because the mod's based off the AC Cobra in our Factor 2, so it's... Um, yeah, so it, it's just, it's just a, a glitch in the mod rather than the, the AC Cobras, because that's a Gordini followed by a Jag. Looking at Rajasu. That Jay's probably silent because it's because uh, it's a Finnish name. GP laps in behind him in the Jag. 
But we're going to try and make his way through in a minute. He's not actually required to slow down and move over like he would be in uh, Formula 1. Because it's a multi-class race. The responsibility is on the faster class car to safely navigate the slower class car. The slower class car can help a little bit, but it's not. Uh, BIP of the Jag is way off. Uh... I mean, the two Jags were first and second in pre-qualifying, but the Jags got a uh, disc brake, so it can it can stop. The Jag might be awful at the at Spa. You never know, because there's only one heavy braking zone, really. A couple of DNFs coming through. From lower down the order. Reese Gardner, 72 seconds behind uh, Britain in first. And there we go, a reminder of your class leaders as we're approaching 15 minutes remaining on the clock. Jake is pulling away from Simoncic right now. Let's get a replay here of. Oh! I mean, in real life, no seatbelts. That would have been head first into the into the into the brickwork, and quite rightly pulls over and hits escape. So that that was going to happen at some point. with Rajasu and Godreki. This is the fight for the lead of the uh, three-litre class. This is over the north, sort of northeastern end of the track. As uh, Costa makes a final uh, gas and go. Splash and dash, whatever you want to call them. We have uh, another incident, apparently. Get a quick replay. Oh, same spot, and oh, just saved. Not not good when the roll hoop is your head. Just escape, dude. <laughs> your, your suspension's gone. Just hit escape. <laughs> I'm not going to bother attempting to pronounce that one, I do apologise. But uh, we're starting to see people fall off in the last 15 minutes or so, to be expected. As Rujasu sets the uh, fastest, over well, fastest lap of the 3 litre class. Starting to pull out that lead to about a second now. And then probably try and hold it there as we watch Frannik Godrecki chase down the Finn in front. Like I've said a few times, it's great to see the national colours being rocked by each individual driver as opposed to uh, fancy liveries. It's all proper. On board with Godrecki now. As we head up towards the pub. It's the apex nicely. A couple of drivers have come a cropper there. Dust being kicked up in front. Full Dukes of Hazard over the railway line and up towards the sort of northwestern corner of the track. Each of these uh, long straights probably about a mile long, so 1.6 kilometres for those of you working in uh, New Money. There's a spot is breaking point, breaking about 300 400 metres. Actually, 90. This is 19. Well, I mean, it's long for 1967. Was Australia on metric by then? Or would it still be? Will those uh, brake markers still be in yards? Answers in chat. We 
aggressive uh, throttle blipping for the tight corner. And this is where he'll have the legs to maybe overtake. That's lap traffic in front of him, so we'll ignore that. Overtaking one of the two litre cars. Chasing down Rajasa in front, who seems to have uh, pulled that gap up to one and a half now, so he's getting the stomp on. But, you know, traffic giveth, traffic taketh away. So it could all, all go wrong for Rajasu in the next couple of laps, you never know. But uh, it looks like the two litre class has been sewn up by Britain. That is a mega lead he's got over Rhys Gardner, who is still running. Fantastic stuff. If we can get Reese in after the race, that'd be great. Oh, he's pitting. It's like a Drecky. He's probably going to lose uh, second place to uh, Nitramzen in third. As we see, the. Uh, the man who made all this happen, leading by 20 seconds now. I bet he is sweating on his stream. Okay, Australia got the metric system in 1971. So just before we did then. Well, before decimalization anyway. Uh, what overall position is the two-litre class leader? He was about seventh last time we checked, so probably st still around that that uh, still around that area. Great shot of the Jag going through the right hand of that. To the, we're approaching the final 10 minutes, so about four or five laps still. It's a controlled drive by Jake at the minute. Hopefully he doesn't need to stop again. And there's Yerne Simicic. 20 seconds behind. He's not going to try and push to, to catch up. He knows where he is. He knows he's in a solid second. He'll stay there. Bag the points. Slovenian racing colours for those of you who have never seen them before white and gold you know, there's, there's racing colours in this race that I didn't know existed Knowing me, if I was driving around this race in real life, I'd get distracted by any trains that were going over that viaduct. It would have been funny though if they, like, they were racing and a train came along and they had to stop at the level crossing <laughs> midway around the lap and wait for it. It's the 1950s, I wouldn't put it past them because safety was an afterthought. Just a reminder as well of the, uh, the the cars that have been used today. Uh, we've had the Jaguar D-Type and the Ferrari 375 in the 5 litre. We've had the Gordini T24 and Aston Martin DB3 in the uh, 3 litre. And in the 2 litre we've had the Maserati and the Bristol in, well, in the 2 litre. So pretty much a two car class in each in each category. It would have been a three-car class in the three-litre, but Kasper Stolzer, who was driving the 
Mercedes 300 SL wasn't able to make it today, so unfortunate, but he'll be back. Insane lead being pulled out by Jake Britton, the class leader in the two litre class. You see on board with him in the bottom right. Sort of nursing the steering over the bumps, being as smooth as possible because you can't really wrestle these cars. As ahead of him, there's uh, two cars trying to out drag each other. Don't know if that's for position ahead of them. Can't see any blue flags at the side of the track. Bearing in mind as well that Jake actually qualified for this race six tenths of a second slower than the fastest guy in the class above him. So 11th overall was Martin Bayer, a 238 dead. And then 12th was uh, was Jake Britton in the Maserati, 238.6. So this guy fast. He's trying to avoid slapping into the back of these guys battling ahead of him. Doesn't want to get involved. But he's not going to lose that much time. I mean, he's 75 seconds clear of uh, Southpaw Racer, Reese Gardner, in behind. Although, Reese Gardner is in danger of being overtaken by Silverwolf 07. So we'll have to cut to that when we see it. We're just having a look at this battle happening ahead of class leader Jake, uh, Jake Britton here. He's supposed to clear the first car. Blue flag being shown at the side of the track. We've had a DNF. From whom? From Hyla. Oh, that's a shame. We'll be able to join the, uh, the, the iRacing 24 hours of Spa a little bit earlier. So Simicic trying to lap a car that's trying to lap. That must be scary. Whoa! Remember, the guy ahead isn't required to pull over and let him through like he would be in Formula 1. Multi-class race, it's the responsibility of the guy lapping to get by safely. He's not going to do it through here because it's just be suicidal, but as we get a yellow in Sector 1. And if you are a, a GP laps fan, every time a yellow flag comes out, the first thing you're going to do is look directly at his uh, timing screen. But he's pulled that lead to 30 seconds nearly over Simicic. It's like... Like Jake ain't stopping out there. Or, or Simicic isn't trying anymore. Simicic is very like Cross, he'll just do the. He's like, right, second, take it. This is uh, quite interesting to watch. Got the onboard in the bottom right, helicopter shots above. Someone almost getting rogered into the corner. A little bit of a slide there. Three and a half minutes remaining. So, depending on where Jake is, I think we've got at least two laps left. So, we're getting ever so slightly closer. Here's Silverwolf 07 chasing down Reese Gardner for second place in the two litre category. Very strong performance from Reese. to class sounding like a, a swarm of angry bees. So 
much in the BTCC at Thruxton. Is this a pit stop for Reese? I think it might be. He's not got enough fuel. That's going to dump him down to at least fourth and fifth. It's all gone horribly wrong for Reese Gardner. Yeah, 16.3 seconds stop. That's. Uh, he needed one more lap of fuel. Unfortunately, but here comes GP Labs Jake, Jacob Demarie, Demare. We're just going to go with Richie Axelson because that's what we know him as. As we have a, a yellow in sector one, so this will be the final lap for the race. Two hours of Longford is coming to an end, and it's absolutely flown by the Jag with a 30-second lead over of a Yerne Simicic, which is uh, something that Jake's going to be able to hold with him for a very long time. I beat Yerne Simicic. So coming through under the viaduct for the final time, holding it together. We'll probably try and get him in for an interview afterwards. We'll try and interview the winner. It'll be good, uh, good to do. A couple of lapped cars ahead of him. Past the pub. It's probably got time for a pint. Is that far ahead? Is, there's a, is that car getting out of its way or did he crash? Over the, the railway. Down this mile long straight up towards the uh, far northwestern end of the track. And he'll loop back on himself. Probably about halfway around the lap right now. on board with the American right now. It's quite a it's quite a funny comparison to make. Jake and I both grew up near Boston. Different Bostons, but I'll take it. And there we go, the time has expired, so the second the leader crosses the line, that will be it, race will be over. So as Jake pulls it around to the start of the mega straight, the uh, the manic mile or whatever it was called in chat earlier. Up through the gears, doesn't need to do anything too leery. If I was Jake, I'd be I'd be braking earlier than normal for this final corner. He's probably got just under a mile to run. Brakes down through the gears. Yeah, he has braked a lot earlier for this final corner, hasn't he? Gets it pulled up, it's pulling it nice and straight. Hits the apex, feeds the throttle. Richie Axelson wins the first round of the Historic Road Racing Championship from, well, assuming that he finishes the lap from Yerne Simicic. Absolutely fantastic win for for Jake, uh, the, the man who runs the league. Wins the first round. You couldn't script that. But brilliant driving in the in the Jag. Yoni Simicic pulling it up for the final corner. Gives it a little bit of a, a little bit of uh, Tokyo drift through the final corner. Yoni will take second place. Brilliant racing from everybody. So he takes second place in uh, that category, and then we have to wait a very long time for for Costa to cross the line. 101 seconds behind Simoncic, that's almost half a lap, but we'll need to see where everybody is in the other classes. We've got Jake Britton coming through, now this is down, he's only just started the lap, so I think he's, I think he's finished. This is, yeah, this is, this is the, uh, the start of the lap, so yeah, he looks to have finished, so he'll take the win in that category, and then we can only assume that Rajasu has taken the class win in the 3 litre class as well. That's Juan Mi Costa takes the uh, third place 
in the Ferrari. Only had the one Jag finish with the retirement of uh, Nico Hillebrand early on in the race. Jackson Robillard will be fourth in the uh, in the five liter category. He's still got a little bit left of the lap to run. By the looks of things. Or he's just uh, doing a faster in-lap than normal. So, mega congratulations to, to Jake uh, for winning that race. With the, with the retirements of Nico Hillebrand and also uh, Enzo Fazzi, he was probably... He would have probably been good for a podium anyway if they had finished. But still, to to beat Yerne Simicic is, isn't uh, something a lot of people can say they've done. So... Very well done to, to Jake. Try and get him some champagne on the podium for that. And uh, we're going to do some, try and do some interviews afterwards. So we'll probably get um, probably get at least Jake in to uh, to uh, to do that. But first, I'm I'm getting stuff in my ear. Uh, was ad break? We're going we're going for an ad break. Buy things. And there is your podium. GP Laps wins the race. Probably because he's been running some hacks underneath the bonnet. But Yone Simicic takes second and Juan Costa takes a third position. It would be interesting to see what would happen if uh, the likes of Enzo Fazzi and uh, Nico Hillebrand managed to finish the race as well. But we've still got a very competitive grid there. And uh, also congratulations to the other two class winners as well. So we'll try and get Jake in in a moment to, to see what happens. Uh, if we can drag him in and uh, have a bit of a chat and uh, and all that good stuff, uh, he is in the interview waiting uh, channel. So we'll uh, we'll bring him in whenever and uh, see what see what he has to say. If we can uh, if we can do that. This is, this is all new. This is all new. Trying to work out what's happening here. So, okay, okay, uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, we're, we're just trying to, to get Jake in so we can have a chat with the winner and uh, see what he thought about everything and how it all went. And uh, obviously, if you if you've not seen Jake's channel before, go and go and uh, subscribe to that, like his stream, maybe go and watch his his POV as well to see what he was thinking throughout the whole thing. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's not nice when you've got someone you know who's faster behind you and things like that. You're trying to win a race and you're just like, oh, please don't let anything go wrong. Don't crash. Don't do anything like that. Been in that situation more than once. It's uh, absolutely horrible as we have. Uh, we've definitely got a few people in uh, the interview waiting. Got Nico, got Yerne, got Jake, got uh, Godrecki as well. Um, so, well, we've got, we've got time for a little bit, a bit of a chat with some, with some people. And... Uh, See what happens. It's, uh, my my phone is uh, doing weird things right now. So uh, as we 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 can uh, just about to move Jake in, so we can have a bit of a chat with him. Hello there, Jake. <laughs> Jake, Jake, Jake is not here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, he is. He is here. How how was that for you? <laughs> like with the, I mean, you, just to let you know, you you've beaten Yerne Simicic. Just let that well, sink in for a minute. <laughs> I'm very very happy, and uh, let's let's talk about the the D type is definitely 
the class of the field. So it was my race to lose, or Nico's to lose. And, uh, but yeah, Yerne was so quick. And I thought in the middle stint that, you know, he was definitely going to run away with it. It was 20 seconds ahead at one point. So he went from like 13 seconds behind to like 20 seconds in front. So did you take a, a longer stop and he take a shorter stop or, or what was that? Because we were trying to figure out what was going on, going on or was it just him uh, him just being you know, Simon Chich? I don't, I don't know. We'll have to, I'm, I'm excited to talk to him later and figure out what the strategy was. Uh, I have to assume he went short on the first stop and I went long. And then we kind of reversed for the second because um, I was a decent, you know, five or six seconds in front of him when we pit for the first time. But yeah, it gave me a scare there in the middle. And I was I started to push quite a bit to see if I could actually pull up to him. But he was turning the same lap times as me, which in the Ferrari is is really incredible. Well, you gave us a scare as well, because we saw on the broadcast that apparently didn't happen on your screen is uh, you went off at the uh, at the pub corner and popped a huge wheelie and we thought you'd actually stacked it but it just turned out that it was a bit of a, a glitch in the in the broadcast so it, it had us at one point as well but you were able to to hold on and you, you seem to have got that jag hooked up but what will it be like at spa do you know if the performance is going to be there or not yeah it's a good question i mean i think the competition is going to be a bit different at spa the brakes are not as important there. You know, La Source obviously, and, and there's a few breaking corners, but much more about raw engine speed. The Jag has a lot of that, uh, but I think the Ferrari is gonna be a better match. And then you could even see the, the Lagonda, which didn't make this race, you know, maybe pop in. Um, so a different type of race. And, and certainly as we get deeper into the season, you know, the Jag is not suited for the Targa Florio or Dundrod. And, and so uh, this race today, I think, you know, it was definitely one I had to win and I'm, I'm happy I was able to do that. Yeah, it would be interesting to see the way that the, the cars pan out because it's basically just a two-car class each time. So hoping we get to see some more appearances from the other cars. But we'll uh, we'll let you go off and have a couple of beers and cool off and, and all that stuff. So congratulations on winning and uh, hopefully you don't make it a habit in your own series. <laughs> yeah, it'll get suspicious then. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. No worries. There we go. That's uh, there's Jake, the winner. We've also got... Um, yeah, we're bringing Yerne Simicic as well. We'll be able to find out what happened there and uh, see what happened with the, the yo-yoing of the of the, the pace between the two of them. We're, we're making this too much of a habit, Yerne. We're, we're interviewing you after races. Um, with, with the, we were just talking to Jake about the uh, the pit stops. You, he was ahead of you, and then you managed to gain like 20 seconds on him. Was that a short stop from you and then fuel saving, or was that just uh, managing the pace? I am not sure exactly uh, what he did in the pit stop, but I think the refueling was similar-ish. Maybe I gained half of that time by the refuel, but I think uh, I think he might have switched all four tires, but I only got new rears, which is oh. half of the time. Okay. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I thought I needed to do something different because uh, those jags were really, really quick today. I think that the balance with Ferraris was amazing until last corner, and in the last corner, um, they they just gained over half a second. <laughs> yeah, we, we saw your car just like sort of wobbling going into that final corner, which looked a bit. I mean, when you went straight on at that final corner, as well, was that just you, you missed your braking point by a few meters, or you, your brakes were hot? Or was that just just one of those things that happened? Uh, Enzo was braking much early behind me and I saw him already brake and then I thought okay may, maybe I should also lift for a couple of meters there uh, and just completely lost the all the my all my brake markers and suddenly I realized that if I turn in I'm gonna go into the hay bell, so <laughs> I straightened the car and yeah that that was probably my chance for the victory gone there because I knew that I, I just needed to be P1 after the start and then try to somehow hold on the, the slipstreams of the Jaggers. So, yeah. And how do you think the Ferrari is going to be at Spa? Because we know that the, the brakes aren't going to be as much of a... in the Jag's favour at Spa. Is it just going to be more engine power from the Ferrari? Or, or do you know anything like about that yet? Or are you just going to see when you get there? That's a very good question. Uh, actually, I thought about it in the last 20 minutes when I, I got the time uh, because nobody was, was around <laughs> me on track. <laughs> Uh, I believe it should be closer uh, because, yeah, because of the lack of the braking zones, as these drum brakes on the Ferrari are pretty sketchy. So, 
I believe um, it will still be a bit of a struggle because of the high speed corners, uh, but I think it should be closer. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. So we'll, we'll let you go and uh, cool off and you know, do what you need to do, whatever Yone Simicic does after a race, and uh, we'll see you hopefully at Spa, and hopefully it'll be a good round for you. Thank you, and uh, on behalf of myself and Bursty Sport and, and Next Week Consulting as a partner, really thank you so much for organizing this series. It's it's awesome fun, it's awesome contrast to all the normal, usual leagues and esports that are going on in RF2. It, it really needed something like this, some historic championship, so thank you. Yeah, no worries, it was it was great to watch and very, very clean racing from everybody. So thank you once again, Yanni, and I'll, I'll probably see you in, in something else in the next few weeks with the with the amount of stuff you do. So um, thank you very much and uh, we'll see you soon. Coolio, right, who have we got next? We've got a bit of a queue for me. Shall we, shall we bring in uh, Godrecki? Okay, that'll be our last one. So, okay, let's bring in, should we bring in Nico? Or should we bring, okay, uh, okay. Franek, how you doing, man? Hello, uh, wow, <laughs> quite out of breath to be honest. Was it a bit of a monster to drive that thing? Uh, yeah, it was really tough. It was really tough because I've had some CPU issues before the race. Uh, so all my practice laps today were only the three qualifying laps I put in. Although uh, the rest of the week was pretty busy for, for me. I, I think I put like 140 laps overall, so wow. Uh, but uh, the opening laps were really a mess. I capitalized a bit on the mistakes of people around me, but uh, then I think I lost like five positions in two laps just because the Gordinis had uh, such a higher top speed. Yeah, we, we thought that the, the Gordinis and uh, the Astons and things like that, they were going to start flip-flopping because of the way where they had their individual advantages. But to be able to to get through some of the stuff that happened on that one, particularly around that viaduct section, it just looked like it was going to end in tears, but everybody got through. So from how was the car over the course of, of the race? Did you start losing the rear? Did you start losing brakes or anything? Or did you start to wonder if your engine oh, was going to oh. hold up towards the end? Actually, I, I was slightly worrying about the engine damage, but uh, uh, fortunately nothing happened in the end. I even pushed uh, the last three laps because I, I just stopped for a quick pass and dash for the last 10 minutes. Uh, but uh, after the first few laps when I dropped behind, I think it was Martin Bayer. Um, and he was running away with, uh, I think it was, uh, oh crap, I cannot remember right now. <laughs> but the top two in my class were just running away from me, so I was lapping alone. And I started preserving fuel, planning to maybe try for a one-stop. Uh, but in the end I made two mistakes, which cost me like 30 seconds overall. Uh, I just uh, dropped the gear to neutral in the braking zone for the last corner and, and locked my differential, uh, trying to preserve fuel to the extreme, and I dropped behind Martin. Uh, in the end, uh, it, it went pretty smoothly. I was just short 10 minutes on fuel, so really happy with, with the result. I think I'm top of the Astons uh, in the results. And how do you think the Astons going to fare at, uh, at Spa, or don't you know yet? Uh, at Spa, uh, I think they're gonna struggle, although I'm not gonna participate in that race because I have a meta challenge round uh, in, in real life. And, uh, but uh, the Aston surely shines in the twisties. Uh, it, it's not really the strongest car under acceleration, but it can really break much later, even than the Gordinis which have disc brakes. And uh, I think this was the circuit with the hardest braking zones on the calendar. So I'm pretty confident after that. <laughs> awesome stuff. Right, I'll, I'll let you uh, go off and do whatever you do after a race. And uh, thanks for taking part and yeah. hopefully see you at a future round. Thank you for organizing this. I can't wait to watch the broadcast afterwards as well. So uh, see you next time, probably. <laughs> no worries. Have a nice day. All right, we've got one more to bring in. Uh, the famous Southpaw racer. Who's, uh, who's always good for, for a bit of a laugh. If we can bring him in and uh, have a final interview. And uh, Reese, how you doing? Is Reese there or is he or is he dead? I mean, all of that. Oh, he's, he's here. <laughs> how was that for you, Reese? What would be your home race for the for the series? 
Yeah, it was uh, definitely a learning experience, that's for sure. Um, thought that I had the strategy worked out, didn't quite. Um, I uh, didn't realize that the car was going to be uh, that um, jumpy on low fuel, which is the main reason I spun uh, coming down to the railway bridge. And I'm very sorry to uh, anyone who came up on me at that point. I tried my best to stay out of the way. Um, but overall, I, I think I learned a lot and still P4 and the two liter class is a really, really good result. Yeah, as we saw you come in for that, that little splash and dash right at the end. So maybe you just had like one lap that yeah. you needed that you didn't have and it was it was quite disappointing to see you be so high up and then and then drop off but how was the car over the whole whole stint did you ever have any worries about blowing the engine or spinning i mean you did spin but i mean like blowing the engine or losing the brakes or anything like that what was the the car doing for you at certain points of the of the fuel stint um, well, I I, I, uh, I was worrying early on, like I was taking it really easy at the start, uh, just trying to preserve the car, but as the race went on, I realised that I wasn't taking anywhere near uh, enough out of it uh, as much as I thought I would. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like I probably could have afforded to push a little bit harder on the brakes, really. Um, it, it was really just fuel that was my main concern, and I was always trying to keep the engine revs as low as possible. I wasn't blipping too aggressively on the downshifts, so it's still um, things I can take forward to future rounds. Are you going to do the you're going to do the future ones then? Oh, absolutely! I'm I'm yeah. going to try and make every single round. Oh, fantastic stuff! What what time is it there at the minute? Uh, currently, it is 12.28 a.m. Uh, ah, so not too benefit. bad then. Yeah, not too bad. Big benefit of being on the west coast of Australia rather than the east coast. Um, the race uh, starts at 10 p.m. for me. Ah, that's not too bad then, is it? Hmm. So I, I'm looking forward to see what you can do at, uh, at Spa. Do you, know, do you know what your car's going to be like there at all, or are you just going to you know, wing it as, as you get there? I think uh, a little bit of both. I've already done a few test laps today, and I like the way the car feels. Obviously, there's uh, an awful lot that I'm going to have to do to get more pace out of it, and I think oversteer is definitely going to be a big issue there through the high-speed corners, so you're going to have to be uh, right on the edge all the way across the lap, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about the Maserati. I do think that the Bristol in the two-liter class might have something to say about it in the first uh, uh, sector or so, but I think a lot of straight-line uh, speed Maserati is um, definitely the way to go. I'm happy with my car choice, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, uh, I'll let you go and uh, do whatever you do after a race, and um, you know, probably get some takeaway or something like that just to chill out, and we'll probably go to bed. Depends on what you're feeling right now, but thanks for taking part, and we'll uh, hopefully see you on the grid at Spa. Thanks, guys. I'm definitely going to have a shower first. <laughs> awesome stuff. All right, thank you very much, Reese, and uh, well, thank you to everybody else who's stopped by to, to watch this. Like, it's obviously a brand new series, like Yerney said, not many series of this ilk are done because it's always gt3s or it's always you know whatever but you saw it it was fantastic to watch clean driving everybody was well behaved and we've still got several rounds of this to go the next one is going to be at spa so if you want to know when all of that's happening uh join the gp laps discord you can also join probably my discord as well because i'll do announcements and all that stuff when it's going on hopefully i'll have another commentator with me next time so we'll be able to fill the the dry air or the dry time whatever you want to call it and uh, obviously, thank you very much to Jake for putting this on and organizing all of this. And thank you to Simply Race, uh, a partner of, of my channel and Sancho Sim Sport and all that stuff. That's how we managed to get all this together. We all worked together to put it all on for you. So, I mean, Jake did all the hard work putting it all on. Simply Race did the hard work of putting all of this beautiful graphics and stuff together. And you did the hard work by, by watching it as well. So. Until next time, uh, well, next time we'll be at Spa. I've been Aidan Millward. Thank you very much for watching. You know, like and subscribe to Simply Race, to Jake, and do all of that stuff that you YouTube kids do. And we'll see you for Spa for the next round. So until then, bye.